There are many things in space, so much so we fall under the assumption that things up there have no effect on us down here on Earth. Scientists will not hesitate to tell you just how wrong you are in saying so. There are many things up there that can affect us down here, one being solar storms. Want to know how solar storms can have an effect on us? Keep watching to find out. First, let's take a look at some facts about solar storms. Many people do not know exactly how solar storms can affect us or if they can at all, as many people don't really even know what exactly a solar storm is, which isn't something to be ashamed about. What solar storms are and do is not really common knowledge that everybody can speak on. The main type of solar storms, solar flare, appear when the sun emits large bursts of energy, which come out in the form of solar flares as well as coronal mass ejections. Earth's last major solar storm took place in February of 2022, with the last one prior taking place in 2017 and the one before that being 2005. While solar storms do not happen as often as some of the natural occurrences everybody knows about, they do happen often enough for a person to be able to see more than once in their lifetime. There are four types of solar storms. Solar flare, which is what we've discussed. Geomagnetic storm, which is the interaction of the sun's outburst with our planet's magnetic field. Solar particle event, which is proton or energetic particles. And coronal mass ejection, which is a massive burst of plasma from the sun. Next, let's talk about geomagnetic storms and how often they occur compared to solar storms. When a solar flare erupts from the sun, small ripples will head towards Earth's magnetic field. It is only when those small ripples actually reach Earth that we see geomagnetic storms. A geomagnetic storm is a major disturbance of our magnetosphere. Geomagnetic storms that have a great deal of impact on us are quite rare. So rare, in fact, that the last recorded geometric storm that had a great impact took place 50 years ago, all the way back in the year 1972. While geomagnetic storms that have a major effect are rare, solar storms that have a major effect happen every 25 years, which means that according to scientists, since the time we last were hit with a major geomagnetic storm, two major solar storms have happened. Scientists also said that solar storms that are smaller than the big ones but still have a bit of punch to them happen theoretically every three years. This comes from a group of University of Warwick and British Antarctic Survey scientists. They describe the two storms as great superstorms, which are the ones that occur every quarter century, and severe superstorms, which are the ones which occur every three years. Now, let's talk about what effect geomagnetic storms have on us. The main thing people care about when discussing things like geomagnetic storms is how it can affect Earth and the people who call it home. Something with a name like geomagnetic storm sounds like something we should fear, but that isn't the case. Not completely. They can have an effect on things around us, and sometimes quite greatly, and humans are pretty much out of the way of a geomagnetic storm's line of fire. Geomagnetic storms cause more effect on the planet itself than it does for the humans on it. When it enters our surface and disturbs disturbs our ionosphere, it can disturb our radio connections, which can cause radios and technology alike to lose signal, damage the sound or the picture, or completely prevent reception altogether. It's been said that a very bad geomagnetic storm today could cost up to trillions of dollars of damage to power grids, radio communications, and satellites. Unlike other storms, a geomagnetic storm, which will more than likely cause a great deal of property damage, will have zero effects on humans. Wealthy scientists are not the only ones who must worry about property damage either. It isn't just satellites, telephones, radios, and other devices alike could also be damaged by a geomagnetic storm. Next, let's talk about some of the earliest solar storms. Solar storms have been around for many, many years, much longer than any person currently alive. The first solar storm was one that took place all the way back in the year 1859 and was given the name the Carrington Event, named after Richard Carrington, who was the astronomer that witnessed the event while looking through his private observatory telescope. While it appeared, Carrington thought quickly and scared sketched the sun's sunspots. Scientists working for NASA have said that it is the largest solar storm to have been documented in the last 500 years. There were great interruptions in global telegraph communications, so much so that some telegraph operators reported being shocked. There were also fires that started in the telegraph operator's workplaces when discharges from the lines bounded onto papers and became a flame. While there have been solar storms that took place before the Carrington event, they have not been properly documented. One example took place in Asia. Many Many, many years ago, 252 years ago, in 1770, the skies of Asia turned fiery red. We know of this event because of the notes kept by people who experienced it, and now we know exactly what it was. Now, let's look at the history of solar storms. While we know that even though there were solar storms before, the first properly documented solar storm was in the 1800s, which also happened to be the biggest one documented. We also know that there have been some solar storms afterwards that were big enough to be notable, even if they weren't as big as the first one. In 
1921, a storm happened that has been said to be one of the biggest to have happened. It was documented to not only have burnt out telephone stations, but electrical apparatus. Some of the blackouts lasted for several hours. A storm in 1989 completely outed Quebec's power grid. In October of 2003, there was a storm named 2003 Halloween Solar Storm, which was listed as one of the biggest storms, with an aura that was visible in both Texas and the Mediterranean countries of Europe. This was first of the two storms that took place in 2003, with the second one coming one month later in November. Then there was the most recent storm, which took place in 40 SpaceX Starlink satellites to fail and be brought back down to Earth. Now, let's talk about Solar Cycle 2025. The Solar Magnetic Activity Cycle, or the Solar Cycle for short, is an 11-year change in the activity of the Sun. It is measured in observed sunspots on the Sun's surface and happens nearly periodically. December of 2019 was the beginning of the newest cycle, Solar Cycle 25. What happens with solar cycles is that the North and South Poles will switch places. In about 11 years after they've last switched, they will switch back. Scientists have expected the activity of the Sun to ramp up all the way to a maximum while talking about it. Solar physicist at NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center, Doug Bicicker, said that while we may not know it, the activity of the Sun is always impacting us and the way we go about our day-to-day -day lives. He also warned that just because as of now it is a below average solar cycle, that does not at all mean that there isn't a possibility there will be extreme space weather. Many scientists have even speculated that based on the cycles we've seen before, it's highly likely that this new cycle will end up being a maximum cycle, which we haven't seen since 2008. Finally, let's discuss the solar storm that was said to hit Earth. In August of 2022, scientists discovered the possibility of a solar storm that could be hitting the planet we all call home. The storms are ranked in between scales of G1 and G5, the lowest being the G1, which is the weakest a storm could be and the one we see happen the most, while the G5 are the most severe of all the storms and is much, much rarer than a G1. It is also the one that heavily interferes with the power systems. This storm that scientists have discovered will only be a G1 storm. While this storm will not have the same effects as a G5, it can still mess with radio communications and disrupt satellites, as well as the migrations of animals. This came after a hole in the sun. These storms are most likely to appear during the minimum stages of solar cycles, which we are in for the next three years until 25, when we move into the maximum stage of our cycle. It was said to have happened on the 3rd of August, and though that date has passed and we haven't seen it yet, it could possibly still happen sometime very soon. The solar storm is both a rare and not rare occasion at the same time. It's a thing that people will be lucky to see if they get the chance to. As we are currently in our solar cycle, it's very possible that we could see a solar storm sometime soon. Were you around to see the last solar storm sky? Let us know down below.